Hello again, people of the internet. Not so long time, no see. Around this time every year, you see lots of people spending lots of money on things that they may or may not necessarily need. Black Friday, Cyber Week, Cyber Monday, all of that fun stuff comes within a very short amount of time, and it's slowly leaking backward into Thursday and earlier and earlier with Thanksgiving. I actually did go out on Thursday with my dad. My dad wanted to pick up, pick up some things for his grandkids, being my nieces and my son. So I went there to to help, pretty much, to facilitate. Because all of the shopping that I wanted to do for myself, I'd already pretty much done. Starting on the, the Monday before Thanksgiving, Best Buy opened up their, not a sponsorship, not a sponsorship, Best Buy opened up their early Black Friday deals to Reward Zone Silver members, and because I've spent a decent amount of money with them this year, I'm actually a Reward Zone Silver member. Yeah, we bought appliances through them because they had the best price and delivery, you know, whatever. Anyway, so one of the things they had on sale, and they, they had two things that I actually ended up buying, they had some laptops that were very decently priced. Now, if you follow me on Google+, you've probably seen a lot of the information on this, so a lot of it's going to be recap. Just going to keep harping on that. There's probably a link down in the video description if you want to follow me on Google+, and keep up with what's going on. But anyway, the first one I bought, it was an Asus 11.5-inch touchscreen laptop with 4 gigs of RAM, a Core i3 relatively low spec Sandy Bridge processor, a 500 gig 5400 RPM slow spinning hard drive, and Windows 8. Yeah. So what's the first thing I do? I pop out Ubuntu 1210, 1204 actually I think is what I started with on a USB stick because it did not have an optical drive in it. Uh, and Ubuntu 1204 did not work particularly well. The touchscreen did not work, the wireless did not work. So I immediately shelved that. I went on and tried 1210 on it, and 1210 worked significantly better. The touchscreen worked a lot better, but it was still limited. It didn't have uh, optical drive. It, you know, the the touchscreen was not as useful in Ubuntu as I thought it should have been. Definitely was very interesting to use in Windows 8. Um, that's something I'm going to talk about a little bit down the road. Is Windows 8 because. The second device that I picked up, and like I said, I, I bought two, I actually ended up returning the first one because, like I said, I could not do anything to it. It had no optical drive, it was not upgradable, the RAM was soldered to the motherboard as far as I know, and the hard drive was either a proprietary shape or had some sort of a proprietary connector. It could not be easily removed and replaced, uh, and I started removing screws to try to access it just to see. and after I got them all out, it refused to come apart. So it was one of those, it was more difficult to work with than it should have been kind of thing. So the second laptop I picked up, I'm actually going to talk about it a little bit today. This is the HP Envy M4. I thought I'd just open it up and give you a little quick, yeah. I've still got all the stickers and everything on it. It looks brand new. This is 14 inch. It's considered an ultra portable. Has a Core i7 3632QM, I believe. That's an Ivy Bridge processor that's actually about as powerful as the processor that's in my desktop behind me, which is another Ivy Bridge, but it's a high, high-end Core i5 that I've got in there. This came with eight gigabytes of RAM, and I believe it's the PC-12800, uh, something like that. Terrible with, with the numbers. It came with a one terabyte 5400 RPM drive, 5400 RPM spinning drive, and what else? No touchscreen, Windows 8, yeah, Beats Audio, if that matters to you. And really, I thought I would talk to you a little bit about this in terms of being a Linux user. I did use it a little bit here and there as a Windows 8 machine, and I'm just not a Windows 8 person. I'm not a Windows person in general. So the first thing I did with this, again, I grabbed my copy of Ubuntu 1204, the USB stick I used in the ASUS machine, and 1204 on this machine, ran admirably. However, the wireless refused to work, and the SD card slot, which right here, refused to work. Uh, by the way, just to sort of go over a little bit more that I forgot to talk about, two USB 3 ports, HDMI, VGA, monitor decides to turn off after a couple of minutes, uh, headphone jack there, you know, same old stuff. Another USB port, but I think it's USB 2 only, wired ethernet, power, uh, CD DVD burner it does not have Blu-ray in it, but I'm not really bothered by that. And then you'll notice this large panel on the bottom. This is one of the huge selling points for me because once I take the battery out, remove this one screw, and give it a little push on the same battery clip, 
that whole plate pops off and you get immediate access to the hard drive and the RAM and once you take this extra piece off I think that's actually the wireless card haven't gotten to that point yet so yeah one of the first thing I did, I did with this like I said I put Ubuntu 1204 on it just live and the wireless and SD card reader did not work I tried 1210 though and the wireless worked out of the box it is if I remember correctly an RA link RT3960 something it essentially did not work in 1204 works perfectly in 1210 I've used it significantly since that time and no real issues wired Ethernet works just fine though either way so if you have to be on 1204 that is an option if you can't get a backported driver which I think you actually can just didn't take the time to do it myself However, again, SD card reader did not work in Ubuntu 12.10 out of the box. So what I had to do was go to, oh, I think it was a Realtek website. If I can find it, I've got the link in my email. I'll put it in the video description for any of you who do have the same laptop and want to run Ubuntu on it. You essentially just download the driver, compile it, mod probe it, and you are done. Uh, it was relatively easy to do, so much so that I did it once and then did it again later whenever I reinstalled just to make sure I had a good copy of everything installed. So yeah, uh, so far, performance on this thing has been amazing. If Windows specs are to say anything, if Windows performance scores are to say anything, the Windows score on this is actually only a, it was a 5.9 when I got it, and that's because it had a 5400 RPM drive, which, as you can probably see with me gesturing here, yeah, it's in my hand now because another Black Friday deal was for, let's see if I can do this here, uh, Vertex 4 OCZ 256 gig solid state drive. Very good price on this, so I went ahead and picked one up, and like I said, has this very easy pop-off plate. Uh, pulled out the innards, it has a, a little shockproof case that the hard drive is encased in. Pulled it out of that, attached the connectors and back together. Uh, the, the little shockproof case was kind of custom fitted to the previous drive. It had little notches out of the corners which didn't work well with this. I'm probably gonna have to go back and make some minor modifications, but it did fit in there, worked just fine. Uh, the only issue I had was, of course, copying the data over terabyte drive to 256 gigabyte drive, lots and lots of partitions from Windows 8 and the Windows 8 Restore stuff. I'm not a Windows person, but the fact that it came with it, I don't wanna just completely throw it away and blow it away and lose the license and everything. Because I do work in a job where there is a possibility I could have to have Windows for some reason or another down the road, it would be nice to just make sure that I have a copy of it and a legal copy of it as well. A legal copy, not an illegal copy. So yeah, I did make sure to keep that. What I ended up doing with that, and I think I talked about it on Google Plus as well, is I used Clonezilla, well, okay, I used GParted to partition everything, uh, shrink all the partitions down, because it had like 200, two 500 gigabyte partitions after I installed Ubuntu. Uh, and, excuse me, bunch of little ones here, there, and everywhere, too, for like a 24 gig Windows Restore partition and a, a UEFI partition and whatever else. So I shrunk the big ones down, compressed everything together, and then ran Clonezilla, the newest version, and told it not to uh, check the size of the destination drive. I knew that the partitions would be small enough to fit, and if it checks the destination size, it'll say, this is not the right size, fail, fail, quit. So it, after that point, it just worked. It just went right on. I booted the drive up. Windows 8 complained a little bit. Uh, Ubuntu, of course, chugged right along. One of the biggest issues I've had with this so far uh, in going back and forth between OSs is there doesn't appear to be a quick and easy way to make it automatically boot to Grub by default. It's got this OS boot manager on top of it. But I'm able to do this with Secure Boot enabled, with UEFI turned on. Ubuntu 12.10 just worked. Just worked fine. Ubuntu 12.04 had some issues. I had to actually turn off the Secure Boot, turn off the UEFI stuff, and use the Legacy Boot mode. But once I got to 12.10, I have not had any issues out of it. Very easy to install. And now that I have an SSD in there, like I said, that 5.9 score for Windows, it's now like a 6.9, and that's because the graphics for this are relatively low-end, to say the least. Uh, it's the Intel HD 4000 that comes with the, the Core i7 processor. There's no dedicated graphics card, so they're not great. However, the processor itself scored about a 7.7 .7 on the Windows experience. Uh, I think the RAM was an 8.1, and the, the SSD is now an 8.1, I believe. So ridiculously fast system, a little limited by the graphics, but I'm not going to be gaming on this, so I'm not going to be concerned with it.
Anyway, my first impression of this device, of the, just to say it again, the HP Envy M4 uh, 1015DX, just to get the entire thing in there. It is insanely powerful, um, of decent size, in case I forgot to mention, 4.4 pounds, 1.1 inch thick, so it's bigger than a MacBook Pro, thicker, heavier, uh, but it is thinner and lighter than my work laptop, which makes it much more useful. Definitely not what I would call an ultra portable, not what I would call an ultra book, but as you can see, I'm sitting here holding it in my hand, uh, flopping around, and it's not really an issue. It's definitely kind of large, uh, and the build quality could be better. This is very plasticky. Uh, the top has the feel of aluminum, but I don't think it is. Um, so yeah. So yeah, biggest complaints, build quality, uh, spinning hard disk, very, very slow, easy to replace though, so that's a plus. Overall though, my opinions, my first impressions after you know using it for a very limited amount of time, for the price, definitely impressed. Uh, I paid $629 for the laptop and then another $150, $160 I think for the SSD. So a grand total of about $800, a little less than that, for a machine with a very high-end Core i7, 8 gigs of RAM, a uh, very, very fast, decent-sized, solid-state drive. Uh, this should be a very capable machine for video editing. That's exactly why I bought it. For when I want to edit video, but I want to be able to spend time with my family, or for the times when I have to go out of town, like I did when I had to go to Kansas for a few days there, uh, it, it will be very nice to have a machine that is somewhat portable, although not the most portable thing in the world, and something that I can take that is much more powerful and much faster than my work laptop was. My work laptop, just for comparison's sake, it's a Dell Latitude E6420. Uh, Core i5 processor, Sandy Bridge, I think it's a 2520. Uh, 4 gigs of RAM and a spinning 320 gig hard drive that's, about, I think, 5400 RPM. Uh, that's been the biggest downfall of trying to use it. The processor's okay, R amount of RAM's decent, the hard drive is a pain in the butt. It's always going to be. And I'm running Ubuntu with Caden Live on my work machine, Ubuntu with Caden Live on this machine, and it just completely smokes it, blows it out of the water. And with the SSD, I haven't even tested editing video with the SSD yet. It should completely blow everything else out of the water that I've got. My, it, it actually should match my desktop at this point because the desktop is a Core i5 that's relatively high end with a decent amount of RAM and a very fast, actually the same SSD but a smaller size because all I've got on, on the SSD there is my root partition and my videos directory that I do all my editing in. Everything else is on a spinning disk, so yeah, backups are essential. Anyway, like I said, first impressions, very long video, um, so far so good. Definitely cannot complain for the price, although it is like $800 out the door right now for it at Best Buy, so I don't know if I would jump on it at that price. Personally, I was more interested in a laptop with a higher screen resolution, because I forgot to mention it, 14 inch screen with 1366 by 768 display, but because it has a full size HDMI and VGA port, it should be pretty painless to hook it up to a TV if I'm in a hotel or something. And for editing on this, I, I have used a 1366 by 768 before, and it's not a big deal to do, it's just a little cramped. Uh, personally, I was kind of hoping to go with something like the Asus, uh, what is it, UX31 Prime or 32 Prime. One of the ones that say Prime, because that's a 1080p display, and it's a 13-inch laptop, and it's very, very thin and very light but the prices on those started at $1,000, and for the ones that were halfway decently spec, it was about $1,300, and most of those came with, uh, either if it came with an SSD, it was not something you could open up and do any modification to, and if it came with a spinning drive, you're paying $1,300 for something you're gonna disassemble, whereas with this, I've paid $630 for something I could disassemble. I think that works a little better for me. I can, I can stomach uh, a little bit larger device for the half the price, essentially. So yeah, uh, if there's anything you would like to know about it, about how anything runs on it, or I don't know, any sort of demonstrations, definitely let me know. Uh, I'm not sure about doing screencasting on it, but it's definitely worth a shot. It'll be 720p video instead of 1080p simply because of the screen resolution, unless I can output to a TV or something, which I could always do. Anyway though, like I said before, that's about all for me for today. My TV is turned off several times behind me, so I'm that's enough talking. 
Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.